Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to talk about how to want to have less. Notice the keyword here is want to. Being quite a shopaholic myself in the past, I used to find it really hard to say no to shopping. However, once I decided on wanting to have less, that's when I started having a healthy relationship with material things. While things like budgeting and planning can work quite well in the short term, you are essentially relying on your willpower to overcome your desire for shopping. Whereas if you actually want to have less, the low buy challenge will just become a second nature and not something you have to work very hard to stick to. So today, I want to share with you the three steps you can take to make yourself want to have less for good and find joy from doing it. Step one, if you're really hoping to want less, the very first thing to do is to identify the reasons you keep wanting more and more in the first place. I've done a video about the real reasons people can't stop shopping and a lot of you have messaged me to say you found the video very relatable. I think a lot of us turn to shopping because we want to distract ourselves from something, whether it is stress, boredom or the need for validation. In fact, shopping used to be my way of coping with stress. Whenever I had a bad day at work, I felt like I had to buy myself something nice. Now shopping did take away the stress, but only on a temporary basis. Usually when I came to my senses, I felt worse because I knew I had just spent a fortune on an emotional purchase. So if you're really struggling with spending and shopping, try to take some time to see if there's something deeper that's affecting your relationship with material things. And if you feel really overwhelmed or you don't really know where to start, consider seeking help from a professional. An amazing resource to get connected to a professional therapist is BetterHelp. And I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is an affordable online counseling service where you can find professional therapies. Just by completing a survey, they will be able to match you with your perfect therapies. There's a wide range of expertise on BetterHelp, so you will definitely be able to find the help you need, whether if you're struggling with stress, low mood or anxiety. This service is available worldwide, so no matter where you are, you can always arrange a therapy session via phone call, video call or text messages. And if for whatever reason you don't click with your counsellor, it is free to change to a different therapist. I personally think that's great because it's always easier to open up to someone you feel comfortable with. There are over a million people taking charge of their mental health on BetterHelp, so if you're really struggling, consider giving them a try. And that's better, H-E-L-P. And if you click on the link down below, you also get 10% off your first month. The second thing you need to do if you want to cut down on your shopping and spending for good is to identify your why. Ask yourself, what is the reason you want to have less or own less? For some people, it might be a way to save money. For others, it might be the flexibility to travel, have a career change, or simply to have more space in their homes. When you know your why, everything becomes easier and the mission is also a lot more enjoyable. Personally, I love journaling because when I put my thoughts down on paper, I get a very clear picture about my feelings and what I truly value in life. For me, having a more minimalist mindset when it comes to shopping means I can have more freedom of my time and flexibility. Some of you know I was born and bred in Malaysia. And even though I've lived in the UK for about 17 years, I still think about Malaysia a lot. Sometimes I've even thought about dropping everything here and going to Malaysia with my husband and my son and then staying there for a few months. I would really love to show my little boy the hometown where I grew up, but at the moment, it is quite tricky to have a long career break, but I would love to have that option. And I know the more intentional I am with my spending, the easier and quicker I will get there. Besides, when I don't have a massive collection of things to tie me down, 
it means I have more flexibility to travel and maybe even move one day. And quite frankly, I think I'll also have less anxiety when I go away because I don't have to leave too many things unattended to. When I listed all these things out in black and white, I can see very clearly the reason I want to be intentional with my money. When you do something with a sense of purpose, you don't have to rely on your willpower anymore and the goal becomes a lot more achievable. So I highly recommend you to take some time to figure out your why, write it down and use that to remind yourself every time you feel like buying yet another thing you don't really need. Trust me, it works like magic. Step three is to declutter. I think decluttering is often part of the minimalism journey for a lot of people, including me. Once I was able to pinpoint my why for wanting less and having less, I decided to have a more practical relationship with material things by only keeping the pieces I actually use. I started by clearing out my closet and I removed so many bags of clothes, a lot of which were brand new and never worn. That's when I realized maybe I do have a problem with shopping and it's time to do something about it. I then moved on to my luxury collection and I started curating every department, including my luxury handbags, designer shoes and fine jewelry. In the last few years, I've downsized my collection a lot and it truly feels like so much weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Now, I want to point out that decluttering luxury items can be quite stressful. In the past, I used to sell my pieces using consignment service, but the commission charge is usually quite hefty. Thankfully, I now have a small following, so if I ever want to let go of something, I usually ask my audience first, but the selling process itself is still quite stressful and time consuming. Every time I let go of something, I always feel very nervous about the item getting damaged in the post or the whole parcel going missing. Anyway, when you've put in the effort to downsize, you naturally become quite protective of your space because the last thing you want is to reintroduce the clutter into your home or having to go through the whole selling process again. For me, the whole decluttering journey is not just about throwing things away. I actually see it as a life lesson because it has really reprogrammed my consumption habits. I'm now very intentional with my spending, not just with big purchases like a Chanel handbag or a Gucci belt. Even when something is quite inexpensive, I think twice before buying it. To be honest, it's now more of a way of living for me. I actually get a lot of joy from being intentional and I like the fact that I'm in full control of my own spending. So those are the three steps you can take if you want to cut down on your shopping and spending for good. They have worked like wonder for me. In fact, I've been doing the low buy challenge for about three years now and it feels so refreshing. And this is coming from someone who used to love buying expensive Chanel handbags on impulse and always going after the next purchase. I think a lot of us do struggle with shopping because we feel compelled to giving in to instant gratifications. So if you can work on your mind and train it to enjoy wanting less, everything will become easier. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.